the overwhelming majority of my comments on the last video said, make it a cone. So let's do that. An interesting observation here, I don't know if you can see it, it's real hard for the camera to focus on the jet, but there's a uh, debris blockage. You can kind of see some stuff splashing off right there. At least I'm pretty sure it's debris, we'll see. This is a smaller nozzle I had to put on. It's a garden hose nozzle. Uh, the shiny one that I've been using forever, you might recognize it if it had a yellow cone on it. And I'm at full pressure, but I had to put a smaller nozzle on because I don't have enough water to run more, more water through it, a larger nozzle. It's been a little bit dry. I mean, look at this. That's all the water I'm getting out of that pipe there, the drain from this ditch here. So <clears throat> we don't have much water. So let's take this out and put a cone in that. All right, here it is set up on my outside workbench. One thing that does suck about the liner is it's hard to change the nozzle ski. You can't really get your fingers around there to put any torque on it. I mean, look at that one there. It's contacting the liner, so not ideal. Also, I didn't show in the last one, but I did screw the liner to the housing. Also, there is some sort of debris in there. There you go, you can see it blocking the nozzle some. I don't have a really fine filter on the intake, it's just a coarse filter to keep out large debris that would clog the penstock, not necessarily debris that would clog the nozzles. And here's a clearer view without that funnel attached. And let's see what that debris was. There. It was a rock. Huh. All right. Got the liner out. I gotta modify this to be cone shaped. Okay, there's my cone shape. Anybody who has uh, experienced some geometry or done a little bit of sheet metal work would know that a cone flattened out turns into an arc or arch shape. And really I just made a cone shape with this and then I traced the, uh, I traced the projected line of the narrowest portion of the cone. Let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. Okay, there's my cone. So to draw a cone, you make a, a cone shape and then you take a projected line here and then on the opposite side, you do another projected line from the narrow spot around, and that gets you a cone. So let's get this cut out. And there we go, a very, very crude cone. I realize that. <laughs> Just working with what I have here. And the a majority of it is actively coned here where the jet would be contacting the spoons. So any water that hits the top and goes away should be directed away and down and then anything that's I realize this is a lot shorter than the other one the other one used to be all the way up to here but this one being lower any water that does get past here is gonna fall by gravity anyways so it doesn't really matter again this is all upside down for reference <clears throat> well got it in. I have those wood blocks in there as spacers just to keep this cone in a cone shape. It's not perfect. It's quite ugly. I admit that. It looks like we have a vortex of air in the housing now. I mean, we did before, but now we have more of one, I think. Maybe. Go see how much power that's making. I hope I enough, have enough water. This is fluctuating and I think I might be like losing power because there's not enough water. And I didn't see it get above 190, 200 watts input. So before it started dropping in pressure, so we're letting too much water through the larger nozzle. So I'm gonna put on the smaller nozzle and we'll see what it does. Might just have to wait a few days, there's rain's coming. 
so we'll get some uh, better test conditions with more water. I need to go order some better band clamps. That one blew off again last night at some point. So I figure this is a good moment since the pen stock is empty and steady state. We'll get a uh, gallons per minute reading. This is a six gallon bucket. And full. And we've got some more favorable weather. It's April 10th and it snowed a lot last night. This is uh, abnormal snow. Eh, Semi abnormal. We sometimes get snow like this later. I gotta find some more band clamps right now just to put that back on. I think one of them's broke. Okay, ultimately I see no effective difference, but then again, my cone-shaped housing is not ideal. Nor is the shape in general ideal for Pelton, which I'm not going to really go into in this video other than one of my viewers sent a uh, part of his dissertation that shows the correct shape for a Pelton housing. Alright, and here's what it looks and sounds like with those extra blocks in there to enforce the cone shape. It's not ideal. Again, I know that. But any water that does hit the cone will be forced downward, so it has little chance of interfering with itself and causing more splashback. I see that a lot of the water there is flowing at least away, and it seems to not be returning, and it, the stuff like right here, I can see it splashing hard, but it gets directed down. So it's again away from the turbine runner. The only problem is that there's some water you can see there splashing directly towards the axle of the turbine and there's not really anything I can do about that without a much, much more complicated housing which I'm not going to go into. In my last video we can see here that asking for more subscribers actually works. So let's get these numbers up and like, comment, subscribe. See you around. Bye.